In this video, we're going to look at how we can configure logging in a Spring Boot 3 application using an external logback.xml file. As you can see, the application.properties contains minimal configuration settings. It has the Spring application name. It turns the banner off and sets the port to listen on to the default value of 8080. Now turning our attention to the development profile configuration, we can see that it exposes the actuator endpoints, which we can use to test this configuration for our logging. Our configuration consists of an error file appender, which logs to error.log, which accepts anything above the error level and denies anything that is below that level. And then we have a second appender, which will log to a nohub.log file, which accepts all the other logs not sent into our error file appender. We've got a couple of loggers defined. You can see that the first two just turn off the Spring Framework and Apache logs because that produces quite a lot and we're not interested in that. Then we've got our application logger, which we've set to an info level. And that basically logs all, everything to the two appenders we defined earlier and our root logger is set to the horn level and logs to the same two appenders that we've defined earlier. Looking at the log files, we can see that they are both empty. And then we can start to look at the code, which we have a rest controller called home controller, where we have a couple of endpoints defined. We have a logger declared in the class that we can use for our logging configuration. The first endpoint is our home configuration, which has a debug log line and returns some JSON data. Whenever that endpoint is called, the second one is the health endpoint, which we can see defined here. It has a request parameter called error, which has a default value of null and a log at the info level, which just returns some data. And if we set the error request parameter, it will issue a second log line at the error level. So that's the home controller that defines the two endpoints we can use for testing. Now that we've seen the code, we can build this project using Gradle. So for that, we run Gradle W and a clean and build, and that will generate the jar that we can use to run the application. To run the application, we can head to the readme file to see the run command. We can see that it sets the debug logs to true, so we can see some output, specifies our log configuration file and sets the active profile to the dev environment, so we get the configuration we saw earlier. If we run that command, we get some logging configuration output just to ensure that our config was picked up and just to pick up some of the things, we can see the file has been set to error log. We can see our nohub log file has been set. We can see some of the loggers that we've turned off is available in this output and all the configuration from our file as expected is over there. Now that the application is running, we can hit some actuator endpoints. We can see which endpoint actuator is actually exposing that we can make use of by hitting that endpoint you see over there. And we can see all the links we can use to get additional information. So for instance, we can look at this one over here, which shows us that it's coming from our system properties. We can see that the dev profile is active. And we can also use the URL to get a list of all the logging configuration that has been set. And as you can see from this output, there's quite a bit of logging configuration that has been set, including which levels are available, what the root logger has been set to. We can see some of the loggers that we've turned off. For instance, the org.spring framework logger has been turned off. And we can look for some of the other logs. So for instance, our application log as confirmed in the configuration file is at the info level. And we can also use it to find a specific logging configuration. So here we're looking for our home controller and we can see that that has a logging level of info defined. Looking at the home controller now, we can start off by hitting our home endpoint that we saw earlier. And if we hit that, we get some JSON output and a 200 response. So if we head off to the logs to see if that produced any output, we can open up the error log file first and we see there's no output and the no hop contains no debug lines for that home controller because our home controller is set to info level. 
Okay, so if we head back to our actuator endpoints, we can use this final endpoint to change the level of our home controller. So we can type in the new level that we want it set to over here. So if we set it to debug and run that, we should be able to now confirm that the logging level has changed by getting the configured logging level, which we can see is debug. So now we head back to our home controller and we're going to rerun that request to slash home. We get the same output as before, before but this time if we look at nohub, we see the debug line has been entered into our nohub file as expected. As expected also, our error log still doesn't contain any output. So if we head back to our home controller now, let's run the healthy endpoint without the error parameter and we get a JSON output and a 200 error response. And if we go look what happened in our logs, you can see the info level log has been added to nohub. And if we go to our error log, there's still nothing that has been added to that log file. So let's go back to our home controller and run the final endpoint which is the health endpoint with the error parameter so if we run that we get output to show us it's down we get a 500 response and this time we finally get an error log that has been added to our error.log for that home controller and in nohub we have a second info line that has been added because we hit the error endpoint Finally, we can go back to our actuator endpoint and change our home controller's logging level from debug to error. And we can just confirm that that has been set correctly by hitting another actuator endpoint. We can see that it actually is at error now. So for the final time, let's go back and actually run those endpoints. So if we hit that error endpoint again, we get the same response. And if we look in error log, there's now a second error logging line as we expect. But this time, if we look in our hub, there's no third info level log to show that we've hit the error log. And that's all there is for this demo.